This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Almost exactly two years ago, I made a tutorial video on how to split pictures for Instagram. Fast forward to now, about 700,000 people have watched that video and I keep getting requests to make a follow-up, specifically how to do a seamless Instagram carousel collage. The difference between the two being that in the first one, it was just a single photo that you were chopping in the middle. In the collage version, you're mashing up a whole bunch of photos to make them one big, long, seamless swiping experience. Now, the cool thing about this is that it's not just a bunch of photos back to back, all of these photos will flow into one another and some of them might be on the split line and some of them might be foreground and some might be background. You can do some really cool creative things with this. Now, a quick disclaimer, this tutorial will include math. math. If you don't like math, math, I'll try and break it down as simple as I can for you, but you're gonna need to use it at some point. Okay, but why would you want to do this type of post? What's the advantage? First of all, this is a cool way to tell a story. By doing a post like this, you can tell a story from start to end rather than trying to get it all into one frame. Next, it's because it's good for the Instagram algorithm. When you make carousel posts like this with multiple photos in them, Instagram will show them to your followers more than once. Let's say they see the first photo, but they go buy it. Later on in the day, Instagram will show them the second photo and maybe the third one. And then there's also engagement. Creating a post where people have to swipe to see the whole thing actually creates engagement with your audience. The longer you can keep them held on your post, the better. We've all seen a lot of different carousel posts on Instagram and usually they're just a collection of photos back to back, but doing it this way will definitely make you stand out amongst all the other millions of users that are on Instagram. Is it billions at this point? So with all that said, I'm really excited to teach you how to do a seamless Instagram carousel collage, but there's a twist. I've never actually done this before. I've got a pretty good idea in my head of how this is gonna work, but I've never actually tried it in practice, so we're gonna be working through it for the first time together, and you're gonna get to see any of the little problems worked out as I go. All right, so the way that I'm planning on doing this is using Adobe Photoshop, but if you apply the same principles, it should pretty much work on any photo editor that you might use. So I've got these eight photos from a trip to Canmore back in the day. They're all pre-edited, so I've got basically all the photos that I'm gonna want for this carousel collage. Some of them are in portrait, some of them are in landscape, so we're gonna do some cool things with how we arrange them. Okay, so when we open Photoshop and we click Create New, we're gonna get this dialog box where now we have to choose the size of the canvas that we want to work on. This is where the math comes in. The most real estate that you can take up in the Instagram app is by using a five tall by four wide ratio for your photo. But when we start to want to make it wider, basically for every time that we want to swipe, we're gonna add four to the width. So instead of five by four, two photos would be five by eight, three photos would be five by 12, four photos would be five by 16, so on and so forth. I think with these eight photos, what I wanna do is try and make them fit within five slides. So now we gotta do some math here. So the maximum height that you can do on Instagram is 1350, and then the width, each photo is gonna be 1080 wide, 1080, times five, 5,400 by 1,350. And 1,350 will always be the height, but the width is what'll change. So we're gonna create, and that is our canvas. I'm gonna pull in all of my photos. And now what we wanna do is basically just make one big pretty picture. So while I take my time arranging this into something that I think looks kinda cool, let me tell you about our sponsor of this video, Skillshare. If you're on my channel, if you're watching a video like this, chances are you love to learn. And Skillshare is the perfect place to learn. In case you don't already know them, Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives just like you and millions of others who are ready to take the next step in their creative journey. And while videos like this one can be a great way to learn a bite-sized portion of a skill, Skillshare offers organized classes with video lessons and class projects to take you even further. If you're looking for something about photography, there's this awesome class from trash hand, or if you wanna learn how creativity and productivity can be melded together, check out this other course from Thomas Frank. But that is really just the tip of the iceberg. There are classes on product photography, graphic design, storytelling, pretty much anything you could think of. It's less than $10 a month on the annual subscription, and as a member, you get access to all the classes, as well as feedback from a community made up of millions. If this seems like something you might be into, make sure to go down and click the link because the first thousand people are going to get a free trial. Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for ever expanding our knowledge.
Okay, back to the swipey swipey. Okay, so one thing that I'm running into is trying to organize these all and thinking about where the splits are going to be because I don't necessarily want to have like a small sliver of the next picture in one split. I want to at least get enough to entice you to swipe to the next one. So one thing that you can do is you can add grids by hitting command or control if you're on a PC and apostrophe. And then what we can do is go into Photoshop, preferences, guides, grid, and slices. And in this specific specific case, we want to have five different subdivisions. Like we said, we want to have five different slices. And so now you can see just very faintly here, we've got these grids so you can see where your slices are going to be. So the first slice I have set up, so it's right in between these first two photos, but we've got this smaller photo on top of it. So you'll have that kind of enticing, like wanting you to swipe to the next one, similar with the next bit. So between the two edges of these two photos, but we've got that one photo on top that'll entice you to see the rest of it. Then with this one, we actually are going to see a good chunk of the mountain here, and you're going to have to swipe to get to the rest. And this is the one that I'm not really sure of. I didn't want to make it just all plain five in a row. I wanted to do something a little bit different with it. So I made these two in the middle here kind of slimmer. And then I wanted to do one nice wide one that actually got cut. But now that I can see where my slices are, I don't want to slice right on me. So maybe something like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So what we want to do next, and this is what I was teaching in my old tutorial, is we want to slice these up. So in your toolbar, wherever your toolbar might be, you can go down to your crop tool. And if you hold down on it, there's a slice tool. And then what we're going to do is from the top left here, I'm going to make my first slice and you can overshoot the boundary of your actual canvas itself. And then knowing that each photo is going to be 1080 pixels wide, we want to just make sure that this lands on that 1080 and it should snap to the grid if you've got grid snapping on. And if you want to find that, click on your help and just go snap, snap to grid. And then you can make sure that that's turned on. Okay, and then we're going to add another slice here. That's looking good. There might actually be an easier way to make these slices. Let me know if you know what it is. This is just the way that I've always done it. So now I've got five slices here. So you can see in the top corners here, one, two, three, four, and five. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up to file, export, save for web. This is important. You have to use save for web legacy. And what we're gonna do is zoom out here so we can see the whole thing. I'm going to choose JPEG maximum quality at 100. My image size is 5400 by 1350. We're going to hit save. I'm going to navigate to where I want to save it. Call it Canmore collage. And then down here, we want to do images only all slices. We're going to hit save. And now if we go find that, you'll see it'll have made a folder called images. And we've got our five images here and you can either airdrop it or put it in your Google Drive or however you get files over to your phone. And then when we go into the Instagram app, you're going to want to make sure that you select the first photo and then you hit the little expand button in the bottom left hand corner so that it pulls up the full size of it. Then after you've done that, hit the multi post or carousel button, which is in the bottom right corner of the photo, and then you can select in order which ones you want. When you hit next, you'll be able to see a little preview of it. Now there are going to be the little black bars in between, but they'll be gone when you actually post it. So it's looking good. We hit next, write your caption. Okay, let's hit share and then we can take a look. And we've got our perfect seamless Instagram carousel collage. Pretty good for a first try, hey? So that is how you create a seamless Instagram carousel collage. Hopefully that was helpful for you. And if I missed anything or if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below and on your way down there, hit the like and subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.